Hey guys, it's your girl Q back with another video. And today I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks for first time Texas exam takers. So stay tuned to see what I have to share. All right, guys. Um, so before you take your exam, you have to register. This is through Pearson. Um, so basically what you need to know is the exam that you want to take. You need to know the name and you also need to know the code. Um, so when you go to that website, you're going to um, scroll down, pick your exam site, and then make sure that you pay the money. So for if you're taking a test that has a variety of different subjects, then it's going to be $116. But if you're retaking the exam and you're only taking one subject, it's going to be $58 per subject area. So make sure that you know this stuff before you get ready to register because it does make a difference. And each time that you go in and sit for an exam, it counts as an attempt. Okay. The second thing that you need to know before you actually take your exam and before you actually register is that the day that you choose to take your exam actually matters. So um, if you take your test between Monday and Wednesday, you'll get your score on Friday. And if you take your test on from Thursday to Sunday, you'll get your score on Tuesday. So it plays a big difference on how you get your score. So I had to wait all the way from Monday to Friday to get my scores and that did create a lot of anxiety for me. And I didn't know this when I took the exam the first time. So I assumed I failed because I hadn't heard anything. Okay, once you register and you've chose a date, you've paid for your exam, you've chosen your site, um, if something happens or something comes up, just know that you have to give 48 hours before you cancel or reschedule the exam. And if for some reason you do not show up for your exam, it counts as an attempt. So make sure that you know the deadline for when you can cancel and reschedule. That way you don't miss out on taking the exam. Another thing um, that I feel is important for first time test takers of the Texas exam is that you only get five attempts to take the exam before the state says you're no longer eligible to become a teacher. So make sure that you watch that. And there's also a 45 day waiting period between each attempt. Everyone that takes the Texas exam um, has to get a 240. And for the sake of just making it easy to understand, a 240 is essentially just 80% on the exam. That is what 240 means. 240 out of 300 is essentially an 80% on the exam. Okay, so now that you've registered, you understand the reporting dates, you've paid your money. Um, now I'm gonna tell you what to do the day of. So the day of, you need to make sure that you have your ID cards ready. It asks for two forms of identification and they need to be photo and they need to have your name on it. One thing that I've heard some people run into is that maybe they've gotten married and so they haven't had the chance to update or change their name or address on their ID card. Make sure that's all up to date when you register for the exam because they will turn you away if your name isn't the same or there is some kind of error in that, like somewhere in that process. So make sure that you have all that ready. And on top of that, Make sure that you gather those two forms of identification the night before so that you don't have to scramble and look for them when it's time for you to be leaving. A good rule of thumb for taking the exam is to make sure that you leave 30 minutes earlier than the time that your GPS tells you it's going to take. And I know this sounds um, like it's going overboard or I'm doing too much. Let me tell you why. I feel that um, when I left 30 minutes early, I arrived early, uh, but that also gave me time to um, sit down and kind of get my anxiety together and make sure that I, you know, I had a last minute chance to study and cram in any kind of formulas, any, anything that I felt was important for me to study in the car right before I took the exam. So I feel like this is beneficial. It also gives you a quiet time. Um, I use this time to listen to a song that I can play in my head because I don't know how long I'm going to be sitting there. So take this time and leave 30 minutes before your GPS says it, it, you're gonna arrive at the location. I'm sure it's gonna help. So again, I'm just gonna remind you, the day of the exam, if you are late, the administrators may turn you away and that will count as an attempt. 
And then remember, you only get five attempts and you have to wait 45 days in between attempts before you can take your next one. So you don't wanna lose time or lose an attempt because you were late. So make sure that you arrive early. Okay, when you um, walk into the testing center, you will have to sign in, register, do your fingerprint, or um, I think they call it a palm vein scan so that they make sure that you are who you say you are. They also provide, or at least my testing center that I went to provided earplugs for me. And I felt like those were really beneficial. They were kind of an annoyance to have something in my ear, but um, I recommend that you actually use the earplugs uh, because there was a guy that was next to me who was popping his gum, cracking his back, doing all this kind of stuff. So take the earplugs and use them. And they also provide you with a little laminated like chart paper and a, it's actually a permanent marker. It's not a dry erase marker because they want to see what notes you're taking. Um, so they don't want you to be able to erase it. But take that, um, take those materials and use them, like utilize them um, because that's what they give them to you for. Once you're finally in and you've, you've been seated, you've been logged in for your test, there is a 15 minute computer administered test tutorial that you have to take. Um, and it tells you not to do this. It tells you not to do something. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you because I didn't understand what it was saying. So I know a lot of people carry formulas. You know when you cram in the night before you cram in a lot of formulas, a lot of just mnemonic devices. The first thing people wanna do is start jotting down little notes from what they crammed or what they remember so that they don't forget it while they're taking the exam. Do not use this time to uh, mind dump. That's what they call it. Don't mind dump and take up all this time because if you don't get through this computer administered test or tutorial, it will, um, it will forfeit your exam. So make sure that you, I recommend that you go through the the guide and don't click that you're finished and then write down all of your notes that way you don't lose any time and you won't forfeit your exam okay and i kind of talked about this one in my last video um but during your exam take breaks if you need it i don't want anyone to feel like they can't get up from their exam or that um you know i mean you're just stuck there because a lot of times people can't just sit for hours and hours on end Get up and take a break if you need it. Just don't make it long. Like if the line to the bathroom is long, I would turn around and go back. If you know you can't find someone to give you some mints or some candy, or you, know, you can't remember the lock to your combination, your combination to your lock, turn around and go back to your seat and then come back again because you don't want to lose time on your test because um, the time is continuously running. So if you run out of time and you haven't answered questions on your exam, it's going to go to the next one and you won't have a chance to go back. After you take your exam, this is where the pressure starts to build, okay? Because you're actually waiting on your scores. I know how this feels. I've taken this twice. Um, but I learned a couple things when I took it the first time. So let me share those things with you and I think they're really beneficial. So the day of your exam, remember I told you, it is already predetermined when you're going to get your score. So after you have taken the exam, there's a certain reporting date. Keep this in your mind so that it doesn't create some kind of anxiety for you. Your reporting date is going to be the same. It's going to, it doesn't matter how fast they grade it. They give it to you on a specific day. Um, something that I found out is they don't actually give it to you until 10 p.m. that night. That's a long time. 10 p.m. is a long time to wait because you know it's coming that day. My heart was beating all day, the day um, of my reporting date, and there was nothing I could do about it. So I have a cool tip for you. So I'm gonna insert a video of me showing how to navigate through this website to get your scores earlier. All right, guys, so I'm gonna be pulling up the TEA website. Um, so what you're gonna need to do is log in with your information that you're given from your coordinator and once you get into that website, you're going to view my educator certification account. Disregard all of this stuff in the light blue. On the left hand side, there are a bunch of tabs. You're going to click the tab that says view examinations. And then it'll pull up your score, whether you passed or failed. 
the test and it'll show this to you at 7 a.m on your reporting date and again the last thing that i want to reiterate is that it does take 45 days or there is a 45 day wait period between one attempt and the next attempt so instead of harping on the fact that you haven't you know done so well you didn't make a 240 on the the exam use this time to go over your scorecard and review what competencies what domains you need to focus on and i would spend all of that time using those study materials that i talked about in my first video um, i would talk to um, your educational advisor whoever you need to to be able to get on track the scorecard helps you pinpoint where you're weak what areas you're weak in so use this as an opportunity to study and i'm pretty sure that it will help you pass the next time so i hope these tips were helpful for you please leave a comment down below if you have any more that you found out and i'll see you guys in my next video Bye.